Yo, what is going on y'all? It's your boy Vel and we are back with another Mobile Legends video. We're going to be doing the 15 strongest heroes. As we know, the meta is constantly changing. Mobile Legends is always coming out with these new buffs, new nerfs, and then new heroes. So, things are always changing. So, I constantly have to do these videos to update you all on what's changed in the meta, what heroes you want to be using, and what heroes can give you some of the greatest advantages when you're trying to rank up and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that, that that's pretty much the intro for this video so down below in the comment section what i want you to do is write your list of the current heroes that you're using your your, your favorite five heroes or the yeah just mainly the heroes that you're using right now that you think are really really good write that down below so we, we can share everyone's opinion down in the comment section also be sure to drop that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are new for more Mobile Legends content. Don't forget to turn on them notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming Mobile Legends videos, man. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. So, let's just jump straight into it, yo. I'm excited about this because we actually have a couple of new heroes coming to Mobile Legends. And, um, yeah, we're just going to jump right into it. So, starting out, we're going to start with, with um, Sylvana. Now, this hero is is amazing. I think this is going to be the best solo lane hero in Mobile Legends. Yes, better than Terizla, better than Guinevere. Um, it, it, she actually is pretty interesting. She has an ultimate with range kind of similar, I feel like, to Esmeralda. She kind of has an ultimate similar to Esmeralda, Terizla. Kind of like a mix there. A mix of those two heroes. Um, and you you can basically stop someone from moving like have people trapped in in a specific area basically just like Terizla does then the second ability with um this new hero you can actually hit somebody with it and it kind of as it's attacking it pulls them back towards you and stuff so that that's a pretty cool ability as well and also then you have the first ability which is really really effective which is a stun the first ability is a stun and if you land that stun you actually get a dash and you also speed up when you hit that ability which allows you to chase people down you can stun them then chase them down then dash at them so it's like you have multiple advantages to using this hero now i actually got to test this hero i played on the advanced server so i was super laggy it was very hard for me to hit skills so i couldn't get the full picture of the hero but what I can tell you is the hero is super, super powerful. And even even with me lagging, even with the experience not being that great, this hero was insane. So when this hero releases within the next month or so, month or maybe two, it's definitely going to be out by December more than likely or January max, I'd say. But yeah, once this hero is out and released, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be insane. I don't think that there's going to be another solo laner that you're going to want to pick over this hero. Next, we have one one. One One is another new hero that's coming. It's a new marksman hero. And the thing that I think is interesting about this new hero, One One, is the fact that she has crazy mobilities. And and what I mean by crazy mobility is she's going to introduce kiting like we have never seen in Mobile Legends. Kiting is a it's a thing. Heroes like carry kites, Aerithel kites a little bit. Um, we have certain kite heroes, but not to the extent that Wan Wan will be able to kite. She'll just be able to dash around you and just constantly move after every attack. And that type of movement, mobility, is going to be hard for her to be targeted and focused by heroes that's super, super fast like Gajin. And even heroes like Valir who can stun and, and attack a whole group. All she has to do is attack and she automatically can bag up away from somebody. I think that it's going to be easy for this hero to stay out of damage. And, um, yeah, I think that um, Wan Wan is definitely going to be a very strong hero uh, in the meta coming up here. So, let me know what you all think about Wan Wan. Um, next, we have some of the same heroes. So, we have Grok. Grok is always going to be one of the strongest heroes in Mobile Legends. He allows your um, teammates to get fed super, super fast because you can roam around, rotate, clear waves, invade, stuff like that. He's one of the best heroes when it comes to invading and trying to take the enemy's jungle and stuff like that, which actually puts the enemies behind and farm if you invade with Grok. So, yeah, he's one of the most useful heroes for that reason. One of the most useful tank heroes and one of the most useful heroes in Mobile Legends overall. So, yeah, had to throw Grok on here. Next, we have Kufra. Obviously, Grok and Kufra are the main tanks in the meta right now. Um, Kufra, we all know that he can just jump out. He's one of the best engagers, one of the best counters for heroes like Fanny, Gajin, and pretty much any other dive hero. Um, Gajin, I mean, um, Kufra just makes it very, very hard to for heroes like Gajin or Fanny to just do anything. And they're some of the most powerful heroes in the game. So, having a hero like Kufra, I think, is definitely a recipe for success when it comes down to roaming being super aggressive and trying to dive early game because in dive comps this that's really what it's all about and literally the hero can dive so obviously he's one of the strongest one ones in this dive meta but um 
Next, we have an interesting hero that I don't think many people will expect. We have Zask. I think Zask is one of the best heroes in the meta right now. And the reason I think that he's one of the best is because as a solo laner, he can put in a lot of work and as a mid laner. Now, there was a point in time where I would have said Zask is, does not make a good mid laner, but I've seen a few people play Zask and play him properly. And I get educated a lot because I thought Argus wasn't very good in the meta as well. Then we met the number one, um, number one Argus player in the world. And so we saw that if you think different and play Argus differently, he can be viable in the meta. And I think that that's the same thing I've just learned with Zask. He's super tanky, super annoying, has crazy sustainability. Um, and then he does a ton of damage. So whether it's defending one lane and being safe doing that, or if it's pushing up and rotating from the mid lane, it's it, he's a very, very powerful hero right now. And then he has stuns and slows and stuff like that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, let me know what you all think about Zask, man. I think that he's really, really meta, and he can be very, very powerful if you master him. Um, next, we have Estus. Estus is actually an interesting hero that's popped up more recently because more people are seeing the pros use this. And when it comes down to supports, that's what usually happens. Supports come in and out of meta. It just comes down to what the pros are doing, and people just mainly follow what the pros do. So um, yeah, Estus has always been valuable. He, he just heals the whole team. He, he, he brings so much to a team. Even though he can be countered if you know what you're doing, if you have the right items and stuff, he's still a very, very powerful hero for most people because most people don't know that you can just counter him with items like Deadly Blade or Necklace of Endurance and stuff. So if people don't know that, yeah, he's just going to be unstoppable. Next, we have Kagura. Kagura is actually an insane hero and she's been insane for a while i don't think that she's got any crazy buffs or anything she's just always been a really good hero it's just crazy to see how some heroes just come in and out of meta um just basically randomly it's, it's random like some certain heroes will just people will stop playing them like a hero like lancelot 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 is not on this list but he's a very very strong hero in this meta and in every other meta that we've had we just don't have many lancelot players so um, I think Kagura is one of those type of heroes that don't don't really get enough credit, but now for some reason she's starting to pick up steam again. And when these players are really really good with her, she can be game changing for a team. Um, so yeah, I think that Kagura definitely deserves her spot on this list. Next, this is going to be a pick that a lot of people probably won't agree with, but I mean I will always stand behind it. Nana. I think Nana is one of the strongest heroes in, in Mobile Legends. And I think that people think that I troll when I say this, but when Gosu Basic plays this hero, he's usually MVP. He usually deals the most damage. He's usually the most valuable player on his team. He's usually carrying and hard carrying when Gosu Basic is using this hero. And when I use this hero, I do really, really well with the hero as well. And it's like people think that it's just luck or because people are super super good and stuff like that but in reality you have a hero who can counter anyone who can allow you to take towers pretty easily um because basically think about when you're trying to take a tower what are you worried about somebody's going to step up and try to attack you if not i can constantly throw down these little um those little what, what melinda what, melinda's or whatever it's called if she can constantly throw those down so if somebody steps up and tries to defend their tower they get transformed and then by the time they're untransformed you threw down another one so they'll be transformed again you basically just get a free tower it doesn't matter if someone's there or not so if you have the right time, kind of teamwork and synergy, she can basically be very, very important and crucial when it comes down to taking towers. And when it comes down to team fights, she has so many stuns. She can throw out, um, she can throw out her second ability every eight seconds. That's a lot of time. Like, and then she has her ultimate that can stun the entire enemy team. But you have to throw throw out the stun at the right time. You have to wait till they're grouped up. So if they have a hero like Terizla or something, all of the hero, all of them have to dive in. And then they, they just all have to be in a group. Then that's when you alt. So it's all about how you play this hero more so than the hero itself. You have to play the hero correctly. But if you do that, she has his mad counters um, for, for every single hero. Next, we have Lolita. I think Lolita is popping back up because she, she counters heroes like Gajin and Granger, which are very, very powerful heroes in Mobile Legends. And 
I think that with the stun that she brings to the table, with her with her ultimate when she can flicker out and really get a group of people as well, if you do a well-timed ultimate, I think that she's one of the best tanks as well. And she's just popped back up in the meta as well. So yeah, Lolita had to be on this list. Speaking of Gaijin, next we have Gaijin. Gaijin is one of the best heroes. He can 1v5. He's one of the only heroes in Mobile Legends who can take on five people consists consistently and if you're if you're good enough you can just absolutely destroy five people by yourself now it takes crazy mechanics and it's a it's a very high learning curve but no it's not really a high learning curve but i mean when it comes down to having fingers fast enough that's basically what it comes down to with guys and you have to have fast fingers and you have to be pretty accurate once you get that down you're pretty much unstoppable next we have harith Harith, of course, is always going to be one of the best in Mobile Legends. Harith is super, super powerful. He has that crazy amount of shield. Even though people are figuring out how to counter the OP heroes a lot more, if you're really, really good with these heroes, you have crazy mechanics and great decision making. A lot of the heroes that's powerful, even if you're using a counter for these heroes, it's no really like just, oh, you countered this hero, so now they're completely useless. If you get good with this hero, he can still be viable. Um, and speak, this, this is just going to be some of the, the OP heroes that we already know. Um, next, we have Esmeralda. Esmeralda is pretty much the same thing. She can be countered by a lot of crowd control. Um, heroes like Nana. Nana is very, very effective against Esmeralda because obviously, if you know that Esmeralda is going to jump on one of your teammates and you just throw down one of your um, second abilities, she jumps in on a teammate and then gets transformed. So, yeah, it's like she's the only one that can get hit by that second ability if you um, place it down correctly. So, um, yeah, Esmeralda is super, super powerful. She can be um, crazy insane if you allow her to get fed and you don't pick a hero that can counter her. But there is a lot of heroes that can counter her, like Franco, Kacha, Nana. Um, even Lolita can counter her somewhat. So, yeah, it's, it's a lot of heroes that can just that can mess her up but she if, if you don't have any counters which most people don't even understand counters in mobile legends then she can be insane next we have xborg xborg is still one of the best um i think he's one of the best because his ultimate and i think that it's best to use flicker on him that way you can catch people off guard hit the ultimate flicker on them and then pull use the second ability and just explode on a bunch of people so yeah i think xborg will always be one of the strongest in mobile legends um even with the nerfs, he's he's had some nerfs and changes coming up here. But even still, I don't think that I don't think that that's going to be enough to completely ruin him. I think his immunity to crowd control when he's using his ultimate is one of his most powerful, powerful um things. The, the most powerful things about him. So as long as he has that immunity when he's alting, I think that his value is just always going to be crazy. Because during the middle of team fights, he can always just jump in and disrupt and get get a few kills or damage people a lot. Um, but next we have granger granger is one of the best marksmen in the meta currently um he's he's actually probably number one when it comes down to all the marksmen right now granger is probably number one um he's very very reliable um he's like he has a lot of escapes if, if you run him depends on how you run him honestly so a lot of people like to use purify a lot of people like to use um flicker I, I'm, I'm personally a flicker type of user myself. I use flicker because it allows you to overextend and you have more of an escape. So when you dash back once with Granger, people expect that that's it. You can't escape anymore now. But then if you use your ultimate, you can go back more. Then if you flicker back, you can go back even more. So you can really overextend a lot with Granger and still have so many abilities that allows you that allows you to escape and go back and back and back to where the enemies can't even touch you. So um, I think Granger is one of the heroes that can play super aggressive and still can't really be stopped. Um, but last but not least, Another marksman that is arguably just as good as Granger, Kimmy. Last but not least, we have Kimmy on the list. And Kimmy, if you take the time to get fed with Kimmy, and she, she farms super, super fast. Like, her and Grok, it's over with. If, if both players are good, it's over with. Her with Grok, um, yeah, it's just not even fair, really. It's not fair at all. Um, but let me know what you all think about that Kimmy and Grok combo. I think Kimmy, if you farm with her and you get her super, super fed, she does so much damage that it's, it's really not really many heroes that she can't kill. But you have to take the time to get fed properly. If you get behind and farm, she's basically useless. Especially late game, she can be useless if you're not farming early game. So it's all about how you perform early game when it comes down to her value. 
um, as opposed to a hero like Granger, no matter how you play early game, the later on that you get, you're going to be even better and even stronger. So, um, yeah, that, it's a trade-off. You have to really, really be super skilled to pull off a Kimmy pick. With Granger, you can be super skilled, and that helps, of course, but even if you're not so skilled, you can make up for it later on throughout the gameplay if you can stick around and do somewhat decent farming. So, that's pretty much it, man. Hopefully, you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Um, make sure you all drop that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications for more Mobile Legends content. And I'm going to catch you all on the next one, family. Peace out, Joe. I don't know nobody, so don't ask for no favors. Don't ask for no paper, they leave when you lose it. But they coming back later, promise they coming back later I'm up now, she wanna f*** now She keeps saying she